Hey there, I'm Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com, and today I want to give you an introduction to the Aurora Ypsilon. Now this is not a brand new pen, but it is new to us here at Goulet, so I've been playing with it for the last couple of weeks, and I thought I'd share with you what I've learned. So Aurora is an Italian pen company that was established in 1919, so they're almost 100 years old, which is pretty respectable for any pen company. And they're uh, based out of Italy, and they are 100% made in Italy as well. So kind of an interesting little point of fact there. And the Ypsilon is Aurora's uh, kind of most popular entry level pen into their line. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So here's the Aurora box. It uh, actually has a box and a case inside. So that's kind of cool. And the box is neat because the case fully sits down in there. It would be kind of hard to grab otherwise, but it has this flap that comes down. So that's kind of neat. So it makes it easy to kind of grab it out of there. Or if you want to kind of leave the case in the box and it open up, you can do that. Um, very presentable. Um, and then the box itself is really nice. It's got a very leathery kind of feel. I can't imagine that it's actual leather, but it definitely has it's, uh, some of the best fake leather I've ever seen. So it's got the Aurora logo in there, and that's kind of cool. And then you just flip it open like this, and um, you get to see the inside. It's got the Aurora logo since 1919, made in Italy. And uh, it's got your pen kind of sitting in here. This is the yellow one, and it comes with a converter, which is installed in the pen. And then it's got an uh, Aurora cartridge as well, it's a blue cartridge in there. And it's got a little warranty card too. Um, it says here that it's uh, warrantied for up to two years against defective materials and workmanship. So it's kind of nice, it's got a kind of a leathery feel on the inside of the box too. So um, you know, they do change boxes from time to time, but at least for the time being, that's what your box looks like. There are five colors available in the Aurora Ypsilon, all of them with gold trim. So you have black, you have Bordeaux, green, red, and yellow. Pretty easy to remember. Holding it in my hand, um, it's got a good balance to it. The grip is uh, pretty smooth, but it's not really slick. It is a resin grip, so it's not gonna be all slippery like it would be with a metal one. And because it's a snap cap, it doesn't have any threads or anything to worry about. And it's got a slight step but uh, it's not really obtrusive. So um, even if you have larger hands like me and you hold your pens a little further back, uh, it's really pretty gradual there. It's not, uh, it's not really harsh. And then on the front end, if you like to hold close to the nib, it's got this nice little ring here, which gives kind of a positive stop, keeps you from going too far and grabbing onto the nib. So that's, that's pretty cool. So the pen is slightly back weighted. It actually has a, a metal tube on the inside, which adds a little bit of weight to the back of the pen, um, which is fine. It's not really noticeable though. It's, it's a pretty light pen uh, in general, it's only 22 grams overall. So just the just the um, body of the pen, you're looking at uh, 14 grams, and the cap is only about eight grams. So if you post it, it's still gonna feel a little bit back weighted, but in general, it's not too bad. So I think it would be comfortable posted or unposted, um, pretty much no matter how you hold your pen. All right, we got five different nib options for the Ypsilon. And these are all stainless steel nibs that are gold plated. So they look gold, but they're actually stainless steel. And even though they're steel, they're, um, they're fairly stiff, but they've, they're actually some of the softer steel nibs that I've ever used. Um, they look a little gross just because I have inked them inked up with Noodler's Black, which tends to cling on a little bit to the nib. So that's part of why it looks the way they do. But um, there's extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and then a 1.2 millimeter italic, which normally I would say, oh, italic just means stub. But this is actually the crispest italic that I've ever used coming from any pen manufacturer ever. Um, so normally to get an italic this crisp, you have to go with a custom grind. But this is part of the reason that um, I thought Aurora Ypsilons were so interesting is because these nibs are a little bit unique. Just in general, all these nibs write a little toothier than most of your other pens. So if you like to have that smooth, kind of glassy experience, these probably aren't gonna be for you, unless you're really comfortable doing some nib smoothing and stuff and you wanna do that, you know, then you're kind of like voiding the warranty a little bit. But um, if you like a toothier nib, these are the pens to go for that. All right, so let's go ahead and fill the pen. It's pretty straightforward. It's a cartridge converter filling pen, which it uses Aurora proprietary cartridges and converters. Uh, and as far as cartridges go, you have really two colors. There's Aurora black and Aurora blue. Now they are both nice wet inks and they are really good inks, but if you wanna really have uh, options as far as colors go, you're gonna to wanna to go with the converter so that you can use bottled ink. The converter is what comes installed on the pen already. And I'll talk about that more in a second. But to install the cartridge, you just take it, you push it on here and you puncture it and then just give it a 30 seconds or so to get to the nib and then you're good to write. And then when it gets empty, you just go ahead and replace it. The converter works a little differently. You install it on here and then it's got a screw tight piston that as you twist it, it opens. So it's 
pretty straightforward. I'll show you how to fill it. Uh, I've got a bottle of Noodler's Black here, which is my ink of choice that I use when I'm um, doing up uh, writing samples for the nib nook on gouletpens.com, which I always do that. This is a new model that we're carrying, so I've inked up all of these with Noodler's Black and I'm writing with them. So I'll show you how that works. Now, as long as you have a bottled fountain pen ink, brand doesn't particularly matter. You just take your piston, you put it all the way down, and you want to submerge the nib all the way up to the grip in the ink. And then you just kind of twist gently and slowly so that you get a good fill. And then just kind of wipe the end. And a lot of pen companies will recommend you just untwist a little bit so that it drips back out. That makes sure that your seed is your your um, feed is really saturated, and then you just take and you wipe off the grip and the nib with a paper towel or a terry cloth towel or whatever your you know tool of preference is for wiping ink off the pen, and then you just install the body back onto the grip, and you're good to write. All right, so now I'm going to show you how all these nibs write. I'm going to start out with the extra fine and work my way up to the italic. Now, the thing I will say is this extra fine is actually pretty darn extra fine. Now, normally with a uh, European pen company, I would expect the extra fine to really kind of be more like a fine, but this one's actually not bad. So I've got it written out here, Rory Epsilon. This is Noodler's Black that I'm using, which you're not going to get to see a lot of shading or anything like that, but I'm really familiar with this ink, so um, it, I get to, you know, get a good assessment of it. But, so this is extra fine. This is a steel nib again. And this is Rhodia uh, dot pad. So these dots are five millimeters apart. So you actually get a pretty darn fine line. The line is um, only as thick or maybe even a little bit thinner than the dots are on the page. And I mentioned earlier that the, the nibs, even though they're stainless steel, they're a little bit soft. So if you wanted to, you could get a little bit of line variation. Now I wouldn't overdo it because it's not advertised as a soft nib or anything like that, but you can definitely get it if you are trying. So that's kind of cool, especially with the extra fine. You're going to see uh, probably a more dramatic variation than you would uh, with any other one. So I wouldn't overdo it a lot because you don't want to spring the tines or you don't want to end up losing how extra fine this extra fine nib really is, but it is kind of a cool feature. And it tends to be a little bit on the dry side for an extra fine nib, and it's, a, it's very toothy as well. So um, I had to actually adjust mine just a little bit because I was feeling almost a hint of scratchiness, uh, and that's going to happen with these nibs because they are so toothy. They can sometimes feel scratchy, so it helps if you just kind of know what you're looking for. The way to tell that is if it's feeling scratchier in one direction over another, it really shouldn't be like that. It should be pretty uniform. But um, in general, I've seen these uh, nibs to be pretty, pretty good as far as um, being, you know, uh, um, standard like that, not being scratchy. So now let's go to the fine nib. Now this one, you're going to get a little bit more ink on the page, um, and it's actually not uh, a huge jump in nib size between the extra fine and fine. It's definitely going to be a little bit wetter, so that's kind of nice, um, and you can still kind of get some of that line variation if you're going for it. but it's going to feel just about as toothy going between the extra fine and the fine. Now the bigger jump is going to when you go up to the medium. The medium, it's going to feel uh, quite a bit broader. And you'll see that as I'm kind of putting it down on the page. Definitely still that, feel that uh, feedback. But you can see even with this pretty saturated black ink, the ink is going to be darker, it's going to be a fatter line. There's a bigger jump between the fine and medium than there is between the extra fine and the fine. And then give you a little bit of pressure variation here. So that's the medium nib. Still feels pretty toothy though. Not as smooth as you would see with most medium nibs. Now let's go and check out the broad nib. Now this one, you can look and you can see that there's just a huge gob of tipping material on the end of this pen. It's pretty noticeable. But it's not a huge jump between the medium and the broad. The biggest jump in these nib sizes is going to be between going to the fine and the medium. The medium to broad is not super, super drastic. So it's actually not one of the wettest broads that I've used. So the broad is a little bit tame. But if you press down on it, you can get a good thick line even with the broad, so that's kind of neat. 
There you go. Now let's talk about this italic nib. Now, normally pen companies will kind of toss up the word italic or stub or whatever, and it always means stub. That means the corners are kind of rounded. It's going to be a smooth experience. You're going to get some variation between the cross and downstroke, but it's not going to be very dramatic. Um, this one is an actual italic, um, like I would, I would say that. I don't know if I would say a crisp italic, but definitely, definitely more of a cursive italic. It's, it's definitely less on the extreme end of being smooth uh, and more on being the crisp side. So I have it written out here already, but um, just to give you an idea of kind of what I'm talking about, when you're writing on the cross stroke, you get a very, very fine line. And then when you're writing on the down stroke, you're going to get a really thick, fat swath. And um, the thing about this particular nib is that uh, you're going to get some more extreme variation between the cross and downstroke. It is a very wet nib, I will say that. Um, and it's not very forgiving in terms of the rotation of the pen in your hand. Um, also, as far as the elevation goes, if you go trying to write too high with it, it's going to start to get spotty and not be as consistent for you. So you got to make sure your pen angle is right about 45 degree angle and that you're not rotating the pen too far one way or another. And you got to write a little bit slower with this. If you try and burn through and write really quickly, you're going to get a little bit of skipping and starting and stuff like that. Um, but if you're writing smooth, writing slow, and being very intentional about how you're writing, you can get a little more of a calligraphy kind of style with a nib like this. So if you're interested in uh, kind of a true italic, I would say this pen is about as close as you're going to get coming from a pen manufacturer without having to go with a custom grind from a nibmeister. One of the things I really like about the Ypsilon is actually the way that it posts. It is a snap cap, so it's actually pretty easy to cap and uncap, um, and you can do it with one hand fairly easily. It's got a pretty positive locking mechanism in there, um, but it's got that same kind of positive lock when you do it posting on the back end as well. So it locks in there very firmly. You don't have to worry about the cap falling off or anything like that, um, and it just feels really good, just very positive, very assured that that cap is not going anywhere. And looking at the clip, the clip design is pretty, you know, it's got a little tapered clip here, and it's got a nice ball on the end, so it goes over your shirt pretty easily, but it definitely is kind of stiff. So if you've got any um, really thick material that you're putting, uh, you know, the, the pen uh, onto on your pocket, it might uh, be a little bit of work for you to do so, but for most pockets, it shouldn't be too bad. Now there has been a slight change in design over the Ypsilon since this pen's been out for a while. If you look at the older version, it's very, very slight, but the only thing that's different is the center band. It used to have um, kind of this black uh, double ring center band, and now it is all gold. So this is a slight design change. If you happen to see pictures of both versions floating around out there, know that the all gold center band is the one that's coming out from Aurora now and moving for the foreseeable future. And then the last thing is this does have a very glossy finish, so it tends to show fingerprints a little bit. That's one thing. If you're a little uh, particular about that aspect of your pen usage, just be aware you're going to want to keep a cloth handy so you can wipe it down every now and then. All right, so now I just want to show you a couple of pens to kind of compare. There's nothing that's really exactly like the Ypsilon, so everything's going to have to be you know, kind of interpreted, I guess, or, or, or loosely compared. Uh, but I grabbed a couple of pens that are in a similar kind of price range, so I can talk about them a little bit. Uh, the first one is the Monteverdi Invincia Deluxe. This one is kind of similar in price, but it's uh, some of the aspects of the pen are a little bit different. It's definitely a heavier pen. It's a little flashier. It's got some interesting carbon fiber things going on. Um, the nibs are going to write a little bit broader than they will on the Aurora. Uh, but you still get a similar nib range option, and it's a similar kind of, you know, interesting mid-range kind of professional looking pen. So I think that one's uh, worth kind of pointing out to you. Another one is the uh, Cross Century 2. Now this one is a little bit thinner. It's got a couple of color options, but not as many as the Aurora does. Um, it's definitely a little bit lighter uh, kind of pen, and uh, the nib size options are only fine and medium, so not quite the same, but similar price range there as well. You've got the uh, Lamy Studio, which is going to be a little bit cheaper than the Ypsilon, but a good nib range option as well. You get some interesting color choices that come about, and they do limited edition or special editions every now and then too um, that were, are kind of interesting, and I just happen to have this red one that looks really similar as well. Um, and uh, same kind of steel nibs that uh, come from Lamy. So that's another, another interesting pen. And the last one I have is the Delta Serena. Now this one writes much broader and wetter than the Aurora does, um, but very similar price point also comes out of Italy from Delta. 
All right, so that's it for the Aurora Ypsilon. Uh, the MSRP on this pen is $120, but you can find it for $99 on GoulaiPens.com. You can also find all kinds of other pictures and technical information there on our site, so be sure to go check it out. You can see writing samples on the nib nook and compare it to a lot of other pens that we have. You'll especially want to do that for the extra fine in the italic, probably. Um, and you can always leave any comments that you have in YouTube or on the blog. We'd be happy to help answer any questions that you might have. So you can check these out on GoulaiPens.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you like this video and you want more like it. Thanks so much for watching and right on.